Well, hey, Dosers, so great to be back with y'all. My name is Chase Dees. I'm one of the associate pastors at the Fallbrook campus, and it's been a minute. I've missed y'all, and I'm looking forward to this time together. Reason that's been so long is I'm actually got back recently from a sabbatical. I was gone for two months. Uh, and can I just say thank you so much to North Coast Church. Thanks to Chris Brown, J.D. Larson, Alex, my counselor, and so many others who not just allowed me to go, but supported and encouraged me along the way. Such a healthy season, something I needed. I'm so grateful for this church and the support that we had. One thing that was often asked is, well, why are you going on leave? And I would say, I'm just, I'm tired and I need to get healthy both mentally and spiritually. Then JD gave me a book called Resilience by John Eldridge. It brought so much clarity to the exact thing I needed. I needed resilience. I needed mental and spiritual resilience. And so today I want to talk on mental resilience because I think it's so closely related to this idea we're talking on of the heart of a father. Because it all stems from truth. That we believe that God is truth and we know that to be true because God's word is true. And in fact, in John, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God is absolute truth. And when we understand that and believe that and trust that, it changes our resilience. It allows us to be stronger and more able to stand up to whatever this world throws at us. With that understanding, it helps me in verses like Romans 12 too. And it says, don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Essentially, God, will you change the way that I think? Because I believe that's rooted in truth and in your word, that transforms my thinking. And so that was the course of my sabbatical, was pressing to God's truth. And I would lay out my entire life, the things I say, the way that I act, the emotions that come up, the way I spend my time, my talents, my resources. Does that match up to the truth of God's word? Or somewhere along the way, whether it be a preference or I was deceived or just a convenience, had I bought in a lie that the world said was truth that didn't match up with scripture? One I want to share with you is probably a saying you've all heard before, that the busier you are, the more successful you are. And I had bought that hook, line, and sinker, and, and I was so busy, I would pride myself in that. Now, don't get me wrong, I think we need to work hard and do good, but not to the extent of the excellence or our family time or our time with Jesus. And so I compare that to God's word. God, the amount of time I'm spending, what I'm doing in my busyness, is that biblical? And in fact, I found it was opposite of that. I found God gave us Sabbath, a day of rest, to be restored and refreshed and renewed. Then I looked at the life of Jesus, and in some of his busiest times, when the crowd was knocking at the doors because they wanted to be healed, he withdrew himself. So if Jesus modeled pause, I think that's something that we need to do as well. So as John Mark Comer says, I'm ruthlessly eliminating hurry from my life. Now, this practice of examining my life and putting it with scripture, that wasn't a one-time thing. I do that frequently now. In fact, anytime I feel the pressures of this world are being bombarded or feel like I don't have the freedom that we're called to have, I lay it out there. And that's my encouragement for us today. Can we be those people who just say, God, will you search my life? The way that I talk, the way that I act, the way I spend my time, how I vote, who I talk to, every part of that. Can we lay that before the word of God and say, does this match up? Or somewhere along the way, have I been deceived? Or have I just bought a lie that you say is wrong? And I want to end with this verse because it's so encouraging for me. John 8, 31 through 32. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, today you are really my disciple. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Oh, that was the freedom that I needed. Do I trust Jesus enough to know that he is truth and do I live in that freedom? So today, if you're not living that freedom and you feel chained, look at God's word and say, does it match up with my life? And I think you'll probably find you're not living the freedom that God's called you to and the truth of his word. Well, guys, I love you. I hope that was encouraging and challenging for you all. Look forward to seeing you next time.